Buster, this isn't like you. I know, but in this episode, we're showing the evils of alcohol. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 controversial kids show episodes ever. Okay, brand new Power Rangers, ready to battle the enemies from the future? For this list, we'll be looking at the biggest scandals involving episodes of children's programs. Which of these deserved the scrutiny the most? Discuss down below in the comments. Number 10, some, more, and most. Sesame Street. Ooh, curses! The wind blew that broom right out from under me and dumped me here. And I don't think I like it. The Wizard of Oz is one of the most beloved classics ever made. So, Margaret Hamilton's return as the iconic green-skinned villain should have been an instant win for Sesame Street. But apparently, Hamilton did too good of a job, as kids were reportedly so frightened of her performance that some swore off the show for good. My fine feathered friend, you've got my broom now! Well, and I'm not your fine feathered friend! No, you're not! Well, give me back my broom! Don't, 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 don't give it back to me! Don't give it up! No, 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 As a result, the episode was eventually pulled off the air, and has hardly ever been screened since. At least Hamilton's in good company, since other celebrities like Katy Perry have had segments they appeared in cut out from the show. Though in the pop star's case, the clip did first appear online, and the controversy was more due with her wardrobe than her performance. <laughs> Number 9. I Lost My Mind. I Carly. Okay, Benson, we get it. You want to humiliate me on the web in front of millions of people? Go ahead and just do it. I don't care. Get back at me for all the mean things I've s Despite its supposed scandal, this episode is more remembered for the Sam and Freddy kiss than anything else. So it's surprising it kicked up enough dust to be pulled from rerun circulation. Except it, Carl's. I've lost my mind. What? You think that just because you like Freddy? <sighs> Don't say it out loud. It's all right to say it out loud. No, it's not. Sure, a storyline about Sam's exploits in a hospital for mental health issues isn't super kid friendly, but the series handles it with plenty of breezy humor. You've got to get me out of here. <laughs> I must get back. To where? The future. Despite everything, there's never been an official word as to why it was quietly banned. But some fans theorize it's because of the plot's similarities to the widespread Free Britney movement. Sir, you have to let her leave. We're doing that Carly tomorrow night. I what? It's a popular web show. Can't be that popular if I've never heard of it. It's not for old people. Either way, the episode is still available to purchase online and in a DVD set, in case anyone wants to check out what all the fuss is about. Number 8, Wild West Rangers Part 2, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. They may be called teenagers with attitude, but these spandex-clad heroes were usually as PG as it comes. Their cartoon-like violence only became a problem in a western-themed two-parter, where the rangers used their blade blasters like actual firearms. When I count to three, draw! One, two, three, draw! took serious issues with the team using weapons that so closely resembled guns, and the backlash proved too great for even these heroes to overcome. There must be some way to know what's going on in the past. Zordon, is there anything that you could think of that would help us? I may know of one way. While it seems the production company Saban never officially commented on the controversy, it doesn't take Billy's brains to realize that the blasters were holstered indefinitely as combat weapons after this episode. Later, the rangers transitioned to more brand-safe ninja powers, ensuring the blade blasters would never shoot again. You have proven yourselves worthy to possess the power of ninja! This is a great responsibility. Use your powers wisely. Number 7, Buffalo Gals, Cow and Chicken. Um, excuse me, sir, but who are you guys? We're the Buffalo Gals! This episode only aired once, but apparently that was all it took to get it yanked from the airwaves forevermore. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon? On paper, Cow's exploits trying to join a motorcycle gang doesn't sound all that bad. But Cartoon Network reportedly thought the actions and mannerisms of the Buffalo Gals promoted stereotypes generally associated with lesbians. 
And it wasn't just an implication though. The entire segment is utterly full of sexual innuendos and mature winks at the audience. Well, at least more than usual for a cow and chicken episode. Look what I found spying on us! Chicken? Chicken! We hate chicken! Till the end of its run, the Buffalo Gals never rode through the show again, leaving Cow no one else to rev up with. You know, there's a moral to this story. But it's a secret! Number six, Last Horizons. Tailspin. The man of the hour! Yes! Monkey Man Grove, the, the, the world's greatest explorer! Yeah, Oops, slipped. It's almost poetic that a show centered around a bush pilot had to call May Day on an episode about flying. After all, taking to the air was a common occurrence for Baloo, but this time, the friendly bear hit some major turbulence in this satirization of World War II. Ah, I love the smell of conquered territory in the morning. On its own, a kid's cartoon about anthropomorphic animals may not be the best vessel to explore the impact of such a major historical event. And things only got worse when the episode came under fire for what many perceived to be greatly unflattering Asian stereotypes. Hey! Fireworks! Oh, fireworks? Oh, yes, yes, fireworks. Uh, perhaps you'd be more interested in seeing my humble palace? Given the not-so-subtle references to real-life tragedies like Pearl Harbor, it's no surprise that this flight was grounded from reruns shortly after taking off. Number 5. Rude Removal – Dexter's Laboratory Of the many inventions of the bespeckled kid scientist, this one never even got to see the light of day. The band segment followed Dexter and Dee Dee, extracting their vulgar selves into duplicate bodies, who then proceeded to speak in profanities throughout. Where the f are we? Beats the f out of me! It didn't fly well with censors, and so the episode lived up to its name and was rudely removed from any official release. At least until 2013, when a censored version was posted online. Excuse me, sir, but we think that was very rude and we are in want of an apology. Yeah, here's your apology. Even though the curse words were bleeped out, it's still a shock to hear Dexter and Dee Dee be so crass. But what's more surprising is that anyone thought this could be in a kid's cartoon at all. Phew, glad that's over, not thanks to you. Number four, Elephant Issues, Tiny Toon Adventures. So, uh, don't you guys drink beer? Uh, only on a full stomach. Well, what are we waiting for? This isn't the first cartoon to take a crack at dark subject matter, but it's definitely one of the most jarring. After all, no one expects an innocuous episode of Tiny Toon Adventures to include peer pressure, Grand Theft Auto, and drunk driving. Even though the characters explain that this is what not to do, it still doesn't make it any easier to watch them drive off a cliff. It's remarkably grim, and as a result, became one of the two episodes of the show to ever be banned, although it later found its way onto cable TV. However, even by today's standards, it's hard to disagree that this PSA might have gone a tad too far. I hope the kids got the message. Yeah, drinking's uncool. So do we get to do a funny episode tomorrow? I hope so. Number 3. Electric Soldier Porygon – Pokemon Apparently, the only thing more shocking than Pikachu's Thunderbolt is how much effect a single episode of television can have. <laughs> the flashing lights in this instalment infamously triggered seizures all across Japan, sending nearly 700 viewers to the hospital. As a result, the Pokemon anime went on an immediate hiatus, Nintendo's stock sank, and several broadcasters came together to create all new guidelines on visual effects. Computer virus the industry-shaking episode was never officially released outside of Japan, but that hasn't stopped it from infiltrating pop culture all around the world. Woo! All that Jesus made me hungry. Me too. Let's go to an authentic Japanese noodle house. With this level of infamy, it's no surprise that Porygon has never again featured on the show beyond just small cameos. Number two, Deadly Force, Gargoyles. Ooh. It's honestly kind of impressive to create an episode this controversial, just eight scripts into a new series. That's right, before the show's production count even hit double digits, Gargoyles decided to pull the trigger on an episode all about gun safety. Sorry, my fault. I was playing with the gun. 
Stupid of me. Sure, the main characters are supernatural, but it's all too real when Elisa almost dies from a gunshot. Evidently, the broadcasters thought so too, and the episode was almost immediately pulled from circulation. However, it would eventually reload onto the airwaves after edits were made to cut out any shot of Elisa's blood. Don't give up, come back to us. To be frank, the fact that an episode this intense saw the light of day at all is a victory in itself. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, conflict. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Have we, Daddy? Uh, have we what, son? We never had a war in this neighborhood, have we? No, we haven't, uh, but why do you ask? For over 30 years, Fred Rogers hosted a kid-friendly talk show about, well, just about everything. While it was primarily targeted at preschoolers, Rogers wasn't afraid to tackle subject matter other programs wouldn't, such as divorce or death. However, the neighborhood got a bit too rowdy when, in 1983, Rogers spent five whole episodes discussing war and its associated violence. We've never had a war here in make-believe, have we? No, not that I know of. There's no mention of war in this neighborhood in any of the history books. Even though it was filtered through an accessible lens, his frank political discussion still drew significant controversy. In fact, it was enough to have the whole thing erased from the series' history altogether after the arc's last time being part of regular rotation in the mid-90s. In a way, that just goes to show how persuasive Rogers must have been. There are other ways to solve a problem, that's for sure. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.